Yes, you know, thank you, Allison. <laughs> I was going to give Allie the cue. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Maggie Longo, and I provide grant support and technical assistance to applicants for the loss of grant. This is the second year that I've done this, and it is the second year that we've been on the eCivis portal, which is also pretty exciting. So there are some changes for this, this grant period, 23 and 24. So we'd, I'd like to run through the presentation. If you have questions, you can throw them in the chat. Maybe, Josh, you could ask them or sort of you know, toss them out there if they're relevant to the slide that we're on. And please interject, Josh, whenever you think you need to. So we're going to talk today about the Local Agricultural and Seafood Grant Program 2024. That's the funding year. So today we're going to spend a little time and learn about the priorities for the program, who's eligible and who's not eligible, any available assistance, which is some training that we're gonna have out in the field, plus one-on-one -on -one support from me, about the awards and administration process and about how the grant applications are reviewed and the scoring metric. And then we'll open it for other questions at the end of the presentation. So the 2024 funding priorities are very similar to the priorities that we have each year supports the entry, growth, and or sustainability of socially disadvantaged beginning small women and veteran agriculture and aquaculture producers and fishers, supports climate change smart agriculture mitigation activities and climate change related adaptations throughout the local food system, supports the development of new marketing, promotion, sales, and or distribution channels including connecting local farms and fishers with Rhode Island's food insecure communities, supports the development of new products, including value added processing capacity, fosters new cooperatives, partnerships, and or collaborations among Rhode Island agriculture and aquaculture producers and fishers and supporting organizations, protects the future availability of agricultural land for producers, including farm transition planning and implementation, and insists with farm food safety improvements, including FMSA and HACCP compliance. So those are the funding priorities for 2024. Who's eligible to apply? For-profit farmers, fishers, and producer groups, nonprofit organizations. All applicants must be based in the state of Rhode Island. And the advisory committee will value geographic diversity in the applicant pool when making award determinations. Remember that the applications are not first come, first serve. All the applications are weighed as a whole unit. They're all reviewed, you know, at the end. And only small and or beginning farmers or groups or of small beginning farmers. So if you're working together with a handful of your friends and co-farmers are eligible to apply for capital grants and aquacultural operations are considered farmers in this section in this regard. So what are eligible activities? Projects or programs must serve at least one of the following purposes in order to be eligible for funding through the LASA grant program. They must assist in the marketing of Rhode Island grown agricultural products and local seafood for the purpose of sale and promotion. They must enhance the economic competitive competitiveness of Rhode Island grown agricultural products and local seafood. They must provide financial and technical assistance support to organizations and producers for activities and programs which enhance the economic viability of local agriculture and support the development of a locally based safe and sustainable food system. Or they must perform other activities necessary to facilitate the success and viability of the state's agricultural and seafood sectors. So remember agricultural is really broad and so is seafood, right? What are ineligible products? So, your application must demonstrate at least one of the program purposes. You cannot start the work pre-award and then seek to be reimbursed post-award for a project. So if you were going to, if your project was bigger than the total amount available in the grant, you could consider in kind if you wanted to get started, but you cannot reimburse yourself. 
You have to be in compliance with federal, state, and local laws and regulations. If you are a previous LASO recipient and you failed to meet the reporting obligations, that would make you ineligible. You have to be engaged in local agriculture, aquaculture, or local seafood. Or if you failed to meet requirements for previous department grants and or assistance programs, or from individuals or groups unable to perform or currently experiencing performance issues with previous department grants and obligations. So, you know, as a uh, award winner, you there's some requirements regarding reporting and there's a midterm and a final report. And it's important that those things are completed because they can be impactful. What are ineligible project activities? Non-project related travel, can't award scholarships with the grant funds, can't be used for general operating funds or an ongoing capital campaign, can't be used for political policy advocacy campaigns, cannot be used to uh, pay for conference or workshop attendance fees. Capital grants for fishers are not eligible in LASA funding due to the original legislation. So that's not something that anyone has any control over that's in the original legislation. And for purposes of the LASA grant, local seafood will be defined as product landed in Rhode Island. How much can I apply for? The maximum grant award available to a farmer individual business or nonprofit is $20,000 and overhead and or admin costs are limited to a total of 10% of the budget proposal. There's a total of $650,000 in the uh, fund this year and the loss of fund. We were really fortunate to have it funded at such a high level again. And the application can be found in two locations. It's on the R, uh, DEM website, and these links are live. So when we send you the slide deck, they'll work. And it's on our page and the DEM websites under LASA. You can also, and there'll be a link for this coming up, register with me and I'll gladly send you all that information. So what do you need to apply? This year, it's a little bit different. So one of the things, besides your great idea and your amazing project, that we're going to be able to help you get the words together to, to submit that application, you need to be registered in the Ocean State Procures portal. Fairly simple, but it is a requirement, especially if you are um, successful in your grant application. You need an EIN or a Social Security number. For the LASA, you no longer need a UEI, and you need to have an eCivis account because that's where the application is. It's online in the eCivis portal, and that link is also live where you can register an eCivis. So there's a best practice on the portal, on the eCivis portal. It's really tech heavy. It works best in Chrome, in incognito mode, which I know sounds kind of peculiar, but that takes away any sort of IP address and allows you to connect directly into the e-service portal. So a stored version of this webinar will be available on the DEM website and on our website. And then last year's and previous year's question and answer sessions are available on, the, on our website and I also believe on DEMs. And then I'm here to help you support any kind of technical assistance in completing the application is available here at the Rhode Island Food Policy Council through a grant provided by the Rhode Island DEM Department of Agriculture. And where interest, anyone interested can apply in that link or shoot me an email after this. Okay. So this is a little bit about the grants award process and the administration of the grants. So if you're successful, Award letters will detail the approved grant, so the program, the amount, the terms, the requirement and conditions, and the next step that you need to take in order to close the grants to receive your funds. This year, projects can take up to 24 months from award time. So that's June. All funds will be uh, awarded by the end of June of 2024. So you have, I forget the date, but it's 24 months after that. So I think it's the end of August because it actually is the start of the year. So the end of August, I think. I have that someplace else in here, so excuse me for not remembering off the top of my head. Again, we talked a little bit before about um, reporting. There's an interim report and a final report. 
it is important that all that information is done in a timely manner because it will make you ineligible for future awards in the LASA grant program. Full grant awards will be provided after the signing of the agreements and 100% of all the funding will be provided by or before June 30th of 2024. So the program funds are administered by Rhode Island DEM. The grant applications are reviewed by the LASA Grant Program Advisory Committee, which is made up of a subset of your peers. The advisory committee is chaired by the chief of the Division of Agriculture. Advisory committee members are appointed by the director of Rhode Island DEM and represent agencies, organizations, and individuals that have a role or interest in the planning, development, and support of viable agriculture and seafood sectors and a locally based sustainable food system. And each advisory committee member will disqualify themselves from participating in the action on a grant application when they have a close personal or professional relationship with the applicant or have any other kind of conflict. So you can be rest assured with that. So a couple of things to know. Failure to load a budget, and I can't quite read this because that's my problem, will result in non-consideration of the proposal. So it has to be a complete submission, which means you have to be registered in the OSP portal. The budget needs to be uploaded and attached and submitted. Otherwise, the application will not be considered for review. Any applications that are incomplete or not submitted by the cutoff time, which is 1159 on November 30th, will not be considered. I encourage everyone to try to get it done before Thanksgiving because then you will, nothing will get lost in the shuffle. And then if English is not your first language um, and you have any trouble out understanding the materials here or the questions in the RFP, uh, the team at DEM was really great and they were able to get some translations for us of the application questions and I have those. And if you need further uh, translation services, we'll try to help. So the grant review and timing. Applications must be submitted. We just went over this by 11.59 on the 30th. Awards will be announced in March of 24. Agreements will be executed in April of 24. And the final reports are due August 31st of 26. And then, as I said, 100% of the funding will be provided on or before June 30th of 2024. So this is a little bit about the scoring rubric. Copies of it is also available on the DEM and our website, and it's weighted this way. Is the project technically feasible based on, on your background? Is the applicant a for-profit farm, fishery, or other food business? That's 20 points. The outcomes, what are your proposed outcomes? What's going to happen? What are you? What makes it a successful grant award? What is success to you? That's 10 points. Regulatory zoning and legal information is five points. And then the budget, which is the other most heavily weighted thing is 15 points. The budget um, portion in the portal is a little tricky to navigate, but I'm really good at it. So I'm happy to help. Oh, that's quick guys, that's it. How can that happen? I see we have something in the chat. Is there a question? Oh, no, that's it. So I'm ready guys, Josh and I are both ready. Can anyone answer any questions? Can we answer any questions? Should I stop sharing and we can uh, see one another's faces? Can you uh, just go back to that, that previous slide for a second? Yeah, who's that talking to me? Adam with Gotham Greens. Hi Adam, how are you? Doing well, how are you? I'm okay. What can I answer? Um, I didn't have a question, I was just, uh, Jotting some notes down on the uh, the grant scoring. Sure. Well, we're going to send you a copy of the deck and the recording. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my the, the presentation off. Maybe we can see some faces if anyone wants to show their face or ask some questions. I hate that it's it's you know it's a lot of information and um, it's a lot of information to digest, right? So it may take a little time for you to come up with a question or to have a question about, is this a viable proposal or, you know, can you help me in some way? And we're here for that. 
So if you have, I'm happy to answer questions now, happy to answer questions later. Anything you'd like to add, Josh? No, I think you covered, um, you know, a lot, so many of the basics. I think uh, I would just encourage everyone uh, to follow up and take advantage of um, Maggie's support. You know, um, this is a program that has a good long history uh, of of support. The Department of Environmental Management has been able to administer these grants for a number of years and has supported us at the Food Policy Council to help you all apply successfully. So take advantage of that. Uh, um, so, but I am seeing another comment, uh, another question in the chat from, uh, here we go. Aaron. Is there any way to see the grant in its entirety in its entirety without logging into eCivis. There actually is, Taryn. And if you just want to drop an email to me, I can send you a copy of all the questions so that you could have some time to think about it. We can, If that would be yeah. helpful to other folks, we can um, include that among what we send out. We'll send out the recording, yeah. recording of this webinar, the slide deck from it. Um, DEM has a, a page on their website. We have a page on our website. Um, and we'll send out that uh, overview, the questions of the application. All right, awesome. seeing yes, please. So we'll definitely send those out. <laughs> Absolutely, Claire. <laughs> you know, it's, um, I encourage you to write whatever it is. And, and I'm here to help you get your narratives into, we need a 250 word abstract and a 500 word description of the project. So I am, and that's hard to start at there knowing that you've had have a restricted number of words, write it. And then let's work on, on getting it to fit into our requirements together. So Ali's put the, uh, the link to our website uh, in the chat, and I've pulled out Maggie's uh, email and phone number for you all. Thank you. And put Thanks. it in the chat as well. Other awesome. questions? One thing that you mentioned a couple times, but it's worth mentioning again, Maggie, is that uh, folks need to make sure that if they have gotten previous LASA grants, that they are current on all of their required reporting for that, right? Yes. That's, a, that's a thing yes. that we don't want you to be bumped out of consideration because you haven't sent the appropriate reports to DEM. So make sure to make a note about that if you've gotten previous loss of funding and make sure you, you know, take a good close look at all of the things uh, in this slide deck about eligibility and ineligibility. You want to make sure you are clearly on that line of what you're doing is eligible. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I think folks are busy. There's a lot of listening, which is great, which means that you've heard the message, right? And you've heard some questions asked and answered, and uh, you know that we're here to be supportive in any way that we can. So it's, um, I really love working on the LASA program because it's always so creative, right? People tend to have really creative ideas. And uh, it's Taryn. And we are, it's... Um, I mean, again, I'm here to help. I feel like a broken record. Excuse me. Take advantage of the services. <laughs> no, you have. I mean, it's a great opportunity for folks. Um, if you need someone who's a sounding board, you know, Maggie is great with that. Uh, if you're thinking through your concept, if you're thinking through, you know, uh, if you have those questions of is this eligible, is this not, you know, if you have those questions of I don't have a my mind wrapped around this or that, you know, need to make sure you get that budget. Uh, in there as well, making sure that the application is fully complete, taking the time to, you know, get it right. Um, and as Maggie said, you know, it's not a race. It's not the first, you know, to get it in that has any advantage. It's do a good job getting exactly what's needed. And Maggie has, uh, has done a fantastic job over uh, Thank you. Uh, working with us. So we're so happy uh, to have her. And and DEM has been a fantastic partner. They um, uh you know, want you to successfully, they want you to apply and and, uh, and be considered for these grants, so. Right, uh, have a strong application, absolutely. Exactly. You know, we have plenty of time. You can save it as a draft in the portal, which will give us time to look at it together. 
So don't push the submit button until you're really ready. It's hard to get that undone. So don't 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 slip. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know that we have any other questions. We're certainly here and we allotted enough time. Um, again, we're going to send out the recording, the slide deck. We'll send out a list, the, the actual PDF of all the questions and uh, probably a link to contact me just to make certain that, and I'm here to help and I'm more than happy and looking forward to it. Thank you, Maggie. And thank you everyone for joining us. As we said, we'll send the follow-up information that we mentioned and this is just the beginning and uh, a chance for you to see what we're offering here and and stay connected so please do reach out to Maggie uh, we want to make sure that you all uh, are able to put together a great application put your best foot forward make sure you get all all the stuff you need awesome well it's been Lots really great today you, guys thank you so I love that thank you so much and thank you everyone who showed up today and was able to come and we'll talk to you soon Okay, cheers.